Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi. Selamat sejahtera. Apa khabar? Kita selalu tak berjumpa lah ya. Walaupun kita apa ni berdekatan tapi sentiasa berjauhan. Right. As you can see on the screen here, this is actually our apa ni, jadual kalender akademik kita dan masa berlalu begitu pantas. Time flies. And I always fly. <laughs> Leaving you. So, you are very unfortunate to have me to teach the course. Yeah? Because I'm not always around. That's very unfortunate and I feel guilty for that. So, how do I going to make up for this? Well, um, I know some of the lectures, uh, some of the topics for uh, starch and even for fats and oil, uh, we don't have time to cover in a face-to-face -face lecture. This is the best to have a face-to-face, -face, yeah? But now, because of the situation and the constraint, I uh, have to put some of the lectures online, and we don't have time to really go through it. Yeah? Now, it will be on fat and oil. Um, so, what we are discussing now uh, is on the fat modification. Yeah? On fat modification. So, when we, when we talk about fat modification, basically, we refer to um, mainly three. Yeah? which is hydrogenation, interesterification, fractionation. But some people, some books or some um, it, uh, industries re also refer to blending, blending different types of oil also as another type of modification yeah uh, in fact blending is a very popular practice in the industry um, blending different types of oil having different types of uh, composition different degree of unsaturation different different iodine value so they blend different uh, two or three two or more different types of fat or oil to get a different um, solid fat profile, okay? Solid fat profile, and this is one way also to eliminate uh, trans fat in the fat. Okay, so hydrogenation, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, has been one of the most popular type of um, modification. Because the process has been established very long time, uh, technically it's quite simple, very easy to control. We can uh, we can change the various reaction parameters during the hydrogenation process. The physical factors here, the temperature, you know, the hydrogen, uh, which is the uh, we need for the hydrogenation. We can control the speed of agitation. We can control the concentration of the catalyst. Okay, so by controlling this process condition, we can control the hydrogenation to be more selective or the less or non-selective, so-called selective or non-selective hydro hydrogenation. Please refer to the notes. I don't have time to go details to explain. Um, and some uh, reference to understand more about the meaning of selective and non-selective. But we can control these process parameters so that we get whether you know, very high selective or very low non-selective process in order to... So by controlling these uh, parameters to make, it, to make the hydrogenation more selective or non-selective, the effect is we can get different degree of solid fat content. 
by doing hydrogenation, basically, we are increasing the amount of saturated fat, saturated fatty acid. Yeah, by the purpose, the whole purpose of hydrogenation is actually to increase the degree of saturation. By increasing the by increasing the degree of saturation, we increase the solid fat content. Very simple. Hydrogenation, we add the hydrogen to the double bond. So the double bond will become saturated bond. Unsaturated becomes saturated. So we increase the degree of saturation. Palm oil, for example, has contained around 50% unsaturated fatty acid and 50% saturated fatty acid, about 50-50. So when we do the hydrogenation on the palm oil, we will increase the degree of saturation above 50%. So maybe now we get 60, 70, 80% saturation. And by doing that, the result is, the, the, the effect is increase of solid fat content. So this is good to make solid fat, plastic fat, such as margarine. Yeah, such as margarine. But again, I repeat, the problem with hydrogenation is the side, uh, is the byproduct, which is the trans acid, the trans fat, trans fatty acid, which has been shown. Uh, many research have shown that it can cause uh, increased risk of you know, coronary heart disease and, and and so on. So now, the industry around the world, which use fat, try to use trans fat. Free, trans fat free, free from trans fatty acid as low as possible. And therefore, now we have problem with hydrogenation because hydrogenation always will will produce trans fatty acid, especially for partial hydrogenation. Okay. So partial hydrogenation. Um, oh, sorry again. When when we do hydrogenation, basically we change the amount of degree of saturation and therefore we change the degree of solid fat content and therefore we change the so-called SFC curve SFC stands for solid fat content or sometimes we use the term SFI solid fat index the difference between SFC and SFI is the way we measure the solid fat but both SFC SFI give us the measure of the amount of solid fat in the product. So we get a profile because we can plot at different temperature, the fat will contain different amount of solid fat. At any temperature, technically, the product would contain some amount of solid fat. So we can plot a graph and this graph is called SFC profile. So by changing the degree of hydrogenation, we can change the SFC profile, okay. And also we can get a different a type of crystal to form during crystallization. So selective hydrogenation, we can get a very steep curve, whereas non-selective, we can get a very maybe more flat curve. Okay. Um, I'll try to maybe make one online lecture also on this so that. Maybe things that are not, not clear to you, um, I'll try to explain that. Anyway, by partially hydrogenating a liquid oil, so we start with liquid oil, yeah, which contain high amount of unsaturated fatty acid, high melting point fat. A very specific melting profile and the right mouthfeel can be achieved. Partial hydrogenation. So we can control the temperature, we can control the pressure, we can control the, uh, you know, the, the, the agitation, we can control the amount of uh, hydrogen so that we can get a specific melting, uh, sorry, a specific curve, the SFC curve. So very versatile process. But the content of trans fatty acid often increase to 
15 to 25 percent under certain circumstances. And under certain circumstances, the content may be as high as 50 percent. No goo. <laughs> yeah? So, by definition, the trans fat free product would contain very, very low amount of fatty acid, around 1 to 2 percent. Yeah? So, no good. So, we have to do something. By, so, the alternative would be by doing full hydrogenation. If we, if we still want to use hydrogenation and yet get very low amount of trans fatty acid, so we can get we can do full hydrogenation, because by fully hydrogenating the fat, all the double bond will be uh, eliminated. Eliminated means it becomes saturated now. Yeah. But then, okay, now the trans fat the trans fatty acid content is low, and we do uh, full hydrogenation. But the problem is um, the melting problem. We cannot control the we cannot get a certain uh, specific type of SFC curve. Yeah? Because we get full hydrogenation, full saturation. So it's, it's, not, it's not very flexible to get a you know, customized profile, customized solid fat content profile. So that, that's an advantage. The advantage is low fatty acid, sorry, low trans fatty acid, disadvantage not very flexible to get a certain profile. Fats containing high proportion of high melting triglycerides can leave a waxy mouthfeel in the mouth. For example, hydrogenated palm kernel oil. Degree of hydrogenation is important to give, therefore degree of hydrogenation is important to give desired melting property. If the fat contains a lot of or high amount of high melting, meaning the triglycerides have, have a high melting point. So this can give the so-called waxy mouthfeel, you know, greasy, waxy, greasy type of uh, mouthfeel in, in the mouth when the, when the fat melt. So that probably not the kind of mouthfeel that we want. Yeah? For example, in the chocolate that use hydrogenated fat, Malaysian chocolate, especially not the premium chocolate, and yeah, uh, those like Cadbury, you know, you can see on the label hydrogenated palm kernel oil, again. Uh, compare if you make the Hershey chocolate, again, uh, you can you can feel uh, you can feel the greasy, macam apa, greasy type of mouthfeel. So those um, the disadvantage of that. So. Um, Uh, okay, so what are the different approaches, other strategies to get a transfree? Yeah? So one way, if we still want to do the hydrogenation, one way, one way to achieve a more suitable melting profile without the trans fatty acid is to first mix the fully hydrogenated fat with a naturally, with a naturally liquid oil. So the liquid oil of course, is almost trans-free. So now we have a full hydrogenated fat, which is also almost trans-free. So now by mixing them, blending lah, this is a blending at a certain proportion. So we can play around with the ratio. How much is the full hydrogenated fat? How much is the full liquid fat? Mix them in certain proportion. So this is one way. That is one way. Yeah, and we can also. Um, so the 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 variable here, or what we can play with, is actually the ratio. Yeah, how much? If you want to get a certain solid fat content, you want to get a certain solid fat content in the final fat. So you just blend certain amount of full hydrogenated fat with full liquid fat. And another approach, approach which is more expensive, this one probably cheaper, 
and more and actually widely used. But um, another method or another approach is by using interesterification, which used to be expensive an expensive process. It used to be, but now getting maybe uh, more costly, effective, more and, and cheaper. Yeah, um, compared to hydrogenation, hydrogenation is still considered. You know, the, the easiest, the cheapest, the most flexible method. But now we have to move. We have to find alternative. For, so therefore, we have to look at either by using blending or by using interesterification. What is interesterification? You can see later. So interesterify and interesterify the mix to get the specific mouthfeel of the end product. If by doing the mixing here, still doesn't feel our requirement in terms of the solid fat content and in terms of the mouthfeel that we want to get, then we can, we can, we can uh, subject the, big, the mixture here or the, blending, the blended uh, fat here to a process called interesterification. Okay? So we can, uh, we can do further modification on the blended oil here, on the blended fat here. So what is inter Esterification. So now we know a little bit about hydrogenation, which is a simple process, adding the hydrogen to the double bond to make it saturated. Next, we have interesterification. Okay. Fat basically are esters, right? Triglycerides. They are esters. And they are mixtures of esters, mixtures of triglycerides. So now, oh, before that, <laughs> additional reading. I think I've given this, uh, the link in the in Enmodo, right? The full article. And, okay. Very good. Uh, very good article, very comprehensive. Please read, please, yeah? 2004. But if you can find the later one, uh, Please also refer and share. Okay, now we talk about interester, interesterification, i.e. Uh, the short form. Sometimes uh, in the industry, people just use short form. So please also know the short form, yeah? i.e. No, Internet Explorer <laughs> refers to reaction between different triglycerides. Reaction between different Try try glycerides. Imagine the oil. We have hundreds of TGs, triglycerides, and they can actually uh, interact with each other. With uh, the keyword here is rearrangement. Interesterification is about the keyword rearrangement. Rearrangement of what? The fatty acid in the TG in the triglycerides. Rearrangement of the acyl group or, or the fatty acid group within, within and between. Within and between. Okay. If we want to make an analogy, for umpamaan, contoh analogy, you know, uh, if I, ha I have two hands, anyone with more than two hands? Okay, share another two hands. Okay. I want to exchange my left hand with the right, Shen's right hand. Okay, so we exchange. So this is a fatty acid. This one fatty acid, one fatty acid. Shen have another two different types of fatty acid. So I can exchange my left hand with uh, Shen's left hand or Shen's right, right hand. So that is, so I'm a, one molecule of triglyceride is another molecule of triglyceride. So we can change hands. Inter, right? So that is inter between molecules. But I can also, can I change hands within myself? I want to change my left to right hand. <laughs> Somehow, lah, any crazy uh, example. Yeah? So it can be within the molecule or between the molecules. But by exchanging hand, if we exchange hand for some crazy reason, okay, how many of us here, let's say we have 30 
people here. So we have uh, multiplied by two, we have 60 hands. Yeah? So let's do the exchange. Finally, different person will have different hands now, but the number of hands still the same, right? Yeah. Still 60. So in interexplication, there's an exchange of uh, fatty acid within and between the molecules, but the number and the type still the same. Uh, so that is what inter estification. But by doing the exchanging of the fatty acid, changing the position uh, of the fatty acid within and in between the molecule, the effect would be a drastic effect, drastic effect on the physical properties. So when we say physical properties of fat, we always refer to the melting point. We always refer to the, um, the solid fat content. Okay? So there will be a drastic effect on the physical properties of fat. But no change, no change in fatty acid composition and degree of saturation. Because unlike uh, this where the interestification and hydrogenation different. Unlike hydrogenation, degree of saturation uh, uh, berubah. But in interestification, the degree of saturation tidak berubah. Because we're just exchanging the position. If you recall the previous exam, uh, ex uh, the previous test, kan? Uh, you get question like compare and contrast, right? Uh, so I'm telling you the sort of you know what I expect of how we should learn this subject, lah. You know, not really you understand about hydrogenation, interestification, you know, but you should know what are their differences. How do how do they differ from each other? How do they uh, and how these differences impact on the quality? On, on the physical properties of the fat or, or the product, yeah? things like that. You, you should go to the higher level rather than just memorize what is this, what is that. So, this process can be applied directly to naturally derive oil and fat or to hydrogenated or to fractionate. So inter acidification can be done on the native oil, original oil or fat, or we have done the hydrogenation, full hydrogenation just now, and after that we do the inter acidification, or we blend the full hydrogenated fat with liquid uh, full liquid oil, and then after that we subject that to inter esterification. Or, by just or we do we do the fractionation. Uh, we we are going to look at fractionation next. Then we get one fraction. We can get many fraction because remember oil contain hundreds of triglycerides, right? Different melting point, so we can get one fraction with a melting point from, say, you know. Uh, certain temperature to certain temperature. Another fraction. Now we can take one fraction and do inter interestrification. Or we can mix one fraction with another fraction. And after that, blend them, mix them. And we do interesterification. So what we want to achieve at the end of the day, why we do all these things, we want to get a specific solid fat content profile because the solid fat content would define the physical properties of the fat. That's all. These are modifications just like we modify starch to get a desired, certain desired properties. So the objective of inter is to change the overall melting profile. Yeah? Overall melting profile. Usually to smooth the SFC curve. You will see the what's the meaning of to smooth the SFC curve. Or the melt melt to change overall melting profile 
or the melting profile of the mixture. Okay. Melting profile of one single fat or the mixture of fat. Usually a decrease, meaning a decrease in the melting point. Yeah. What's the meaning of this? So let's say uh, let's say in the oil or in the fat we have one we have two different triglycerides R1 R2 represent the triglyceride so we blend the oil uh, we have we need to use a catalyst to catalyze the reaction then we get the interesterified oil in this case it's a randomized randomized interesterification random interest interesterification meaning the the exchanging of the fatty acid with uh, in the in the fat between the triglyceride can happen randomly there's another type which is directed which is more you know uh, controlled so we can get now now we start with this one two homogeneous triglycerides but we can end up like this yeah the we start with two species we end up with more we start the r1 uh, this triglyceride with this type of profile uh, this is what uh, what we meant by sfc profile the plot of we plot the solid fat content at different temperatures so we get this curve so oil 2 this one oil 2 this one oil 1 uh, it's like that when we interesterify the oil these two now come like this so we can see there is a drastic change in the solid fat profile so usually we start with we define what we want do you want this type of profile or it can be different shape can be different you know so if i want like this so now we have to decide which oil that when i blend them in a certain proportion and interesterify them under certain condition would give me this so of course this is not an easy uh, things to you know it's not a simple thing actually so we need to do a lot of uh, experiment and, and, and so on today uh, yeah yeah Shen. Yeah. Um, the, the mm. I know uh, when we mix, we, we start, uh, in this case, this is a simple, simplified example. We start with two different types of oil. And now we imagine uh, this, again, very sim simplified case. Yeah? We imagine that in the oil, there's one, only one type of triglycerides. Yeah? Very homogeneous. Lah. But in the real world, it's not. Each oil contains you know, hundreds of. Uh, triglyceride different degree of saturation and unsaturation but in this simple case we can see each one oil one will start with one sfc oil two with its own sfc profile when we mix them we measure the sfc it will give us this one if that is what we want fine if that is not exactly we want then we have to figure out okay now maybe I'll change this to another type of oil or maybe I add a third oil so as you can see there are many possibilities and it's not that easy how to make life easy how to make our experiment or our trial and error to make it easier and faster okay. so in the nowadays we can use a software We, for each oil, for each oil, palm oil, canola oil, uh, 
uh, olive oil, whatever oil, we know the exact composition of the fatty acid from, of course, from the analysis lah, yeah, using GC or whatever the modern method. We know exactly the type of fatty acid, the degree of saturation of the fatty acid, the ratio of the saturation and the ratio of the saturated and unsaturated fatty acid. We know. Okay. Now, by using the so and and we know also the solid fat content SFC profile. So we have all this information. Remember, information is power. <laughs> so we have this data for each oil. We use the software. Okay. Now we tell the software. The software. We tell the software. I want this type of profile. Please tell me which two oil, when I blend them, I would get this. Wow. Powerful, eh? So the software will end up. Oh, you can blend canola oil with palm oil in this proportion. Yeah, you can do that. But, okay, you tell the software. Don't tell me any random two oil. I want to use palm oil and maybe, let's say, um, I don't want to use corn oil. Corn oil is in the SCS, yeah. So I want to use, say, canola oil. Yeah. I, I just want to use palm oil and canola oil. And I want this curve, this kind of SFC profile. Please tell me what proportion I need to uh, mix them. And if I do the interestification, whether I would get this or not. So to make life easier nowadays, the industry can use the software. Otherwise, it's going to be, of course, they can do experiment, experiment, but to really closely match the profile that we want is not that easy if we just do simple trial and error. Okay. Now, this example is actually random. Inter expectation meaning that we can exchange, just exchange, exchange the fatty acid. But uh, uh, the, the industrial process of inter expectation can also have the process in a more directed, meaning that we can uh, specify more specifically the kind of the kind of uh, composition of the final um, triglycerides uh, that would give us a certain profile of the final product. Yeah. And we can also do the interesterification inter by chemical interesterification or by using enzymatic interesterification. This one I don't want to elaborate uh, too much, but you just, you just know that can be done by using enzyme. Enzyme, as, as usual, compared to if you use acid or alkali, enzyme always more, yeah, okay. I enzyme is always more specific. We can control more. We, the product would could, would be more predict, predictable. Yeah, but the problem um, many years ago, using enzyme is always more expensive than using uh, chemical method. But now, of course, when when the industry produce can produce enzyme in a more uh, cost effective way, the process will become cheaper and cheaper okay okay let me give uh, one uh, this is a real example of by when how we can use interesterification to produce the the specific type of fat with a specific type of solid fat content so in this case we have a we have a solid fat containing about 60% of essential fatty acids 
essential fatty acid yeah the fatty acid that is essential for our body essential for the physiological um, uh, process in the body a solid fat containing about 60% essential fatty acid can be obtained by directed ie of in this case sunflower and blending it with 5% hard fat what is the meaning of hard fat Sometimes we call it hard stock, yeah, fits, uh, for for the meaning that we have this uh, basically the the so-called the plastic fat that has been fully fully what hydrogenated. Okay, so this again example one good example of blending. Yeah, blending, then after that inter esterification. Uh, this long sentence is just to to say that by doing uh, inter explication we can improve the quality of of the fat. Yeah. Another example. Mm. Okay. Nothing much to explain, just example. Because now I want to jump to fractionation, another type of modification. Okay. Uh, in Malaysia, um, if we go to most uh, refinery, refining uh, factory that do the refining, we always have the process of fractionation also carried out. The same factory. Who went? Who went? Uh, someone kan? went for the training. Forgot now already. So went for uh, training in the tra uh, refine uh, palm oil refining refinery. No. Mongling. Ah, Mongling na. Uh. Oh, you you di you didn't go to the. Oh, okay. Why why uh, nowadays not many students go for training in the palm oil. We have so many industries. Huh? Uh, yeah, banyak ada kita punya kilang apa ni palm oil ref, uh, refinery. You can learn a lot if you go there. There's so many unit operation you can learn also. You can learn about unit operation kan, evaporation, crystallization, filtration, macam. Yeah. Anyway. Fractionation is a very simple. Uh, the the principle of fractionation is very simple. It's a physical process as well. That's why we, you learn in IMK 209 about the process of crystallization. So this is one good example of where we can apply crystallization. Basically, remember. So you have to recall back your IMK 209. The process of crystallization can be done from starting from two. Types of uh, to 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 well, from uh, we can start from a solution, or we can start from a melt, M E L T. So the liquid oil is a melt. A liquid oil is not a solution. Uh, can, uh, we must use the term correctly. When we say solution, must have solute and solvent. Yeah, so when you dissolve sugar in water, you have sugar solution. So to get crystallization, you have to go to supersaturated state. Then go to the labile state. You can get spontaneous crystallization. If you are in a metastable state, you can exit to get the crystallization. Right. So remember that. But uh, in fractionation, we start from a liquid oil. What is in the liquid oil? We have a mixture of TGs, triglycerides. Each triglycerides has its own melting point. So now we cool down from 
some uh, high temperature, elevated temperature, we cool down. When the temperature reach the melting point of that triglyceride, that triglyceride will start to crystallize. Because we reduce the temperature to the temperature below the melting point of the triglyceride, so that the triglyceride can crystallize. That is the principle of fractionation. Very simple. But why why we want to do to, to, to do fractionation among other things? The objective is to remove minor components detrimental to the application of oil. For example, the waxing of sunflower oil. Uh, some oil, like sunflower oil, they have this component called waxes. Waxes are lipid. Remember? Lipid is a broad group of compound. We have waxes. We have true fat, which is triglycerides. We have waxes. We have phospholipids. We have what else? So many things. Hmm? Ah, so this is everything called lipid. The fat, the true fat, which is the triglyceride or triacylglycerol, is only one type of lipid. So that's a different. Yeah? When you say fat, when you say lipid, fat, what's the different? Lipid is a bigger group. Fat is a subset. It's one component within the lipid. So waxes are also lipid. And in some oil, when we extract the oil, the waxes also can, will be sometimes extracted together in the oil. Waxes is a big molecule. They have a higher melting point than the fat. So if waxes are present in the fat or in the oil, in the liquid oil, so in a cold country, especially during winter, the waxes can start to crystallize. It will crystallize first compared to the lower melting point uh, TGs. So when they crystallize, they will form like uh, 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 cloudy, you know? Huh? Sorry? Opaque. Opaque, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, it's like a, a cloudy kind of thing suspended in the oil. Actually, nothing wrong with that. Perfectly safe to use. But if you go to the supermarket and you want to buy the oil, liquid oil, you see one clear oil, another oil with, what is this? Yeah. So the consumer would think that it's a bad oil, a poor quality oil, they won't buy. But actually nothing more than crystallized waxes. Uh, so we want to remove that. How do we remove that? By fractionation. Reduce the temperature, the waxes would crystallize, then we remove that by filtration or centrifugation. Okay, so that's one of the objective of fractionation. Another objective, which is the main reason why we do fractionation, is we want to get higher value oil or higher value products, higher value fraction from from the oil. So we start with one oil, say palm oil. And we do the fractionation, we can end up with 10 different fractions. And each fraction can be used for specific purposes, specific products. So basically what we do, we add value. From one oil, we can get more value, more products. So the separation into two or more fractions or wider applications enhance greater value than the parent fat. For example, fractionation of palm kernel oil or palm oil. So the palm oil, we can separate into two, fraction, two main fractions called stearin, the, which is a solid fraction, high melting point, and olein, which is the liquid fraction, low melting point. Stearin and olein. But the stearin itself can be further fractionated the olein also can be further fractionated. 
So we have, uh, in another slide, we have, you can see there are many fractions. Um, well, the objective again, before we look at the process, the enrichment of desirable triglycerides, for example, POP in palm oil. POP is a specific type of triglycerides uh, containing the P stand for the palmitic, O stand for olic. So palmitic, olic, palmitic. Yeah? So this is a specific fraction. Why we want to have this POP? So we can use this fraction maybe, you know, in a bunny uh, for to 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 as the equivalent to replace some of the cocoa butter in the chocolate. Okay, so in the palm oil, of course, not only POP, we have many other types of triglycerides. But what if we want to just enrich that oil? with this type of fat. So we can do the fractionation, we can crystallize other fat, other fractions, we end up with this fraction. So that's the meaning of enrichment of desirable triglyceride. Huh? Oh, I thought, okay. What question? Uh, P.O.P. pop, not K-pop. Saya pun tahu juga K-pop. Eh? Tahulah baca paper. Tapi tak sempat nak tengok lagi lah. Uh, later we look some of the application. Eh? Um, on we can also use fractionation as also another alternative to hydrogenation. To get the trans to, to, to get the trans fat. Yeah? Because um, unlike hydrogenation which always produce the partial, the partial hydrogenation always produce the trans fat, but fractionation is just basically a physical process. We let the each triglyceride to crystallize. That's all. By reducing the temperature, by cooling the oil. So to get fractionation of palm oil to yield fractions that can replace hydrogenated soybean oil in margarine yeah? or other type of oil. So what is fractionation? So as I have explained just now, Oil contain mixtures of TGs, different melting point, different solubility. If cool carefully, so um, we start at high temperature, then we cool down. The more saturated, higher melting triglyceride will solidify first and can be separated. If you see the uh, uh, the earlier part, which I don't uh, cover, I don't have time to cover in the class. When you look, look at the chemistry and the physical properties of fat. What are the factors which affect the melting point? Huh? Double, the presence of double bond. So you have more double bond, the melting point will be... More double bond, the melting point will be... Higher. Lower, lower, lower. <laughs> confident, lower. Yeah, lower lah. Uh. If you have more conjugated bond, Oh, okay. So, yeah. So by by understanding what affect the melting point, so we can control the the process so that we can uh, we can get a different fraction with different composition of uh, apa ni, the saturated and unsaturated unsaturated fatty acid. Okay, we stop here. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Okay.